welcome everyone. And it's a great pleasure to introduce Shang Tzu Wu, who is an associate professor here in the Department of Physics, Chemistry and Pharmacy, and also a fellow at Diaz. And Shang Tzu did his PhD at the Technical University in Berlin, and then moved on as a postdoc again in Berlin, and then to um, Dresden. Afterwards, he came to SDU, and now he's funded by a very prestigious DFF, DFF Sapir Aldegrand, which allows him to fund his research. And today he talk about tailored emulsion biocatalysis, a new approach to chemistry synthesis. So please go. So thank you, Benjamin, for the introduction. And also I would like to take the chance to thank Tina for the nice organization. So as Benjamin said, uh, my today's talk is something about and use the emulsion for enzyme catalysis. So this talk includes five different paths. And considering the diverse background of the audience, so in the introduction, I would like to introduce some basics about the enzymes, and as well as uh, uh, some research activity and, uh, and ideas in my current group. And then I will explain and why the emulsion is used for enzyme uh, applications and also showcase the different examples of using the different emulsion uh, for enzyme catalysis. So first, what is the enzymes? enzyme? And it's the protein widely existing in all living system and each enzyme works for specific bioprocess. For example, and some enzyme in your human body converts the sugar into energy for each of your movements. Most enzymes are protein which are composed of a different amino acid sequence. So this amino acid and can save assembly further into a three dimensional structure and with biological functions. A typical enzyme like this one has an active site here and which is actually the site responsible for enzyme catalysis. So enzyme catalysis and usually employed, uh, employ two different steps. And first binding the substrate and to the enzyme pocketer, and then the transfer them from the substrate into uh, the product. So these two steps and they usually occur very, very fast and therefore the use of enzyme can speed up such a uh, by transformation in a short period. In contrast, so this is, if you use the enzyme, it's like running in such a way, it's very fast. In contrast, enzymes, can even using the enzyme, it's a very green process. The laser requiring energy, not generating waste. So this is a very appealing uh, for application in the industry. So today, and we can reproduce and isolate enzymes from smaller microorganisms like uh, uh, bacteria and E. coli, and using them in the big factory. And demo here is a particularly strong uh, country and in the enzyme technology. And for example, and we have the world largest enzyme company, Novo Enzymes, and we produce nearly half amount of enzymes for the world. And these enzymes and have been widely applied in many different industry and also in your daily life. For example, you probably use the enzymes to prepare your bread already. You also add the cheese and drink uh, beverages and vines that are also produced by uh, enzymes. So not only for the food, and, but also you probably use the enzyme containing detergents uh, for your house cleaning. And in addition, and the, the enzyme is also used for producing uh, uh, clean energy, for example, by ethanol and by diesels and for the transportation sector. Furthermore, enzyme is frequently used as green catalyst for synthesizing important chemicals, producing active drugs and in the chemical and pharmaceutical industry. 
more and more in them uh, in them is so widely applied nearly everywhere in total enzymes has been used to make and improve nearly of using enzymes so enzyme you know has been used for the detection of Crohn's the gluten stand master for checking if the one is concurrently carrying coronavirus or not. Uh, coronavirus is the RNA virus. So in the PCR test, and first of course, you need to pick up the samples, and then you have to, uh, um, you, have, you need to the first uh, uh, reverse transcription from RNA to DNA, and but usually the amount of produced DNA is not enough for the detection. And in this case, and we need a classical PCR procedures to amplify DNA and where, and you can use the, where it involved uh, the important enzyme DNA polymerase and to amplify the, the production of the DNA, which is in the end to be readable by the machine. And in addition, enzymes are also used for checking if one was previously infected by coronavirus. In this case, we can use the ELISA uh, technique to analyze, um, to, to analyze the presence of a coronavirus antibodies. The procedure is such, uh, you can drop a, a small amount of human blood samples onto a plate which contains the antigen, for example, the spider protein of coronavirus. So as, long as the sample containing the antibodies, it will combine with the antigen. Then afterwards, you can drop a second liquid, which contains another antibody uh, with uh, enzyme uh, together. So this antibody will combine with the primary antibody together. In the end, so the system containing an uh, enzyme, for example, uh, if the enzyme is uh, host register process, so this enzyme is known able to uh, catalyze some reaction to produce the color. So this color can be again readable by the machine then to tell the one is uh, uh, has the antibody or not. So, and so not only for diagnosis, diagnosis, diagnosis enzymes are also used to uh, producing uh, pharmaceutical drugs for disease treatment. And for example, the GSK has ever employed the enzyme lipase to perform such a acylation reaction in order to synthesize uh, these anti leukemia drugs. And since we are not all here as chemists, so I will not explain uh, why this reaction is challenging in chemistry. But generally speaking, if you don't use this enzyme, you will produce many different side products, which is actually uh, harmful for the treatments. However, if you apply such enzyme, in the end, you will get the only such a pure compound and with, with a very good efficiency. Similarly, and another company, and the BMA, BSM, and also employed a secondary in the medical process to produce a, such a anti-viral uh, drugs. And so again, since the enzyme allows such a complicated chemical synthesis uh, in a simple way, and if you use enzyme, you can get such a pure of this compound in the end. However, if you, if you don't use enzyme, this is extremely difficult in chemistry to get such a pure compound. So those examples are only the tip of iceberg. Actually, enzyme play many important roles in different marketer. Let's take United States marketer as uh, examples. And we can see in the past, uh, the, the market sharing of enzyme has been increasingly and a lot in the past, and it's expected uh, such increase will continue in the next years. And so, and so applied applied enzyme, of course, is not only good for for the, for, for the industry, but also it benefits uh, efficient and a green society because using enzyme is a green technology for producing products. So, um, so, so there are many enzymes uh, are used now in the industry and they now can be uh, 
classified into six different groups. And some years ago, uh, all of them, novel enzymes, list all these industry enzymes you use in the market. And if you are uh, looking for some applications relevant to the enzyme, and you can check such a paper and buy either in the large scale from novel enzymes, or you can, for example, buy from uh, the other supplier, for example, Sigma. So, um, so the beauty of using enzyme in the past and also in the future uh, can now automatically raise an uh, important question. So is there any limitation actually using enzymes? The answer is yes. So natural enzymes, you know, are not born for unnatural industry operations. Instead, uh, they often face two limitations. The first, they are not expensive. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are very expensive, but not recyclable. And because most of the enzymes are proteins, are water-soluble proteins, and you cannot pick them out of water for the second use. And the second limitation is the natural enzymes can only do the natural jobs. They cannot catalyze the many reactions of your interest. So in summary, so they, are, they have two limitations. They are not recyclable and they cannot perform uh, the new, uh, new applications as you want. So this is the challenge of using enzymes uh, but also it's the opportunities for scientists and engineers to improve the enzymes. And in the past, the, the biologists had made a, a very good contribution to improve the enzymes for better or for different functions. So this Uh, either at a specific position of the protein or at a randomly position of the protein following with a screen. So this method and this, this method are very successful, therefore won Nobel Prize twice. But and we see a lot of progress on such a field. We also see a bit of the uh, limitations, for example. If you only change uh, one side of the protein structure, so that might not give you a final good functions. However, if you randomly change the protein structure and following with the uh, screen, this is usually it's uh, um, it's very uh, uh, tedious and uh, laborious. So, and in our lab, and we are also working for enzyme engineering but we do something different from the biologist. So we are using the chemical way. So, so our method here, it's actually very simple. We are just do, doing something like uh, fashion design. So we give the natural enzymes uh, with the synthetic clothes. And those clothes and either act as a big carrier that allows enzyme for the recycling uh, in the future and this is the way we call the enzyme immobilization. Or, and we give the enzyme the synthetic clothes as um, active component like this one on top of the enzymes. And this will give the enzyme new functions. So we, we uh, call this one is enzyme modifications to give enzyme new to nature uh, catalysis. By doing such, and we hope to contribute a bit to solve the long-standing problems of enzyme recycling and lack of new reactivity. And let me first explain uh, our idea uh, a bit more. So we are work for tailored enzyme immobilization and tailored enzyme modifications. So for the immobilization and in, uh, in our lab, uh, we try to find a suitable um, materials or suitable building blocks to immobilize, to encapsulate enzymes in the end to suit the enzyme faster in their specific application conditions. And for the enzyme modification, and we use uh, some bigger and active molecules to interact with the enzyme and which will give the enzyme new to uh, natural reactivity. And for example, 
allow the enzyme take new sub substrate to produce the new products. And this is also my DFF project. But due to uh, the time constraint today, I will only uh, introduce and focusing on this part. So for the enzyme immobilization, so in my group, it's further divided into two different parts. And we use both the salt materials and also the liquid system to immobilize the enzyme. So in the salt, salt materials, this is actually, it's a hard materials. So for example, in the past, and we use the, uh, we use the hydrogels and we use the mass porous uh, materials like a mental organic framework like the silicon mass porous materials to encapsulate enzymes after the encapsulation, after the immobilization. So this enzyme and it can be reused for many different times for the recycling purpose. And so um, again, so, so today I'm not going to spend time on this part. Instead, I would like to focus in on demonstrates how we use the immersion uh, use the liquid system for enzyme applications. So before going into details, I need to tell you some uh, background about uh, the emulsions. So let me give you a simple experiment that you can also do at home. And you can prepare the three glasses on the, tab uh, on, on, on the table, and then you pour the clean water onto each of the glasses. And, and then you can pour uh, you can put the cooking oil into each of these glasses and what what happened you see and you are, you will see that you will see on um, the oil and water separated into two different liquid phase however and if you add the egg yolk into one of the carp and then you just start to stir in them a bit then you you can observe that uh, you, are, you you can get a um, milk like system so this, what we call it, uh, is emulsion. So in the, in the end, it look like the, like milk. So this is a, it's a, it's not anymore like the, like here. It's a two different liquid uh, liquid phase, but here they are actually kind of mixed, look like milk. And so in this emulsion, actually the oil droplets, uh, the oil phase, it's a, it's a spread as a very smaller oil droplet in the water. So this is simple techniques and actually has been widely applied in our real world. And for example, you drink, you, you, you eat, and just emulsions such as milk and such as uh, as ice cream and uh, uh, mayo, mayo, and you even use them and for painting your house. So emulsion exists not only as the oil droplets spreading inside of the water, and but also it can be the water droplet spread, spreading inside of the oil phase. And this is, you can also find in your uh, real life, for example, and the body lotions, the creams and others. So, and from the previous video, and you find that uh, the emulsion is, is only formed when you add in the egg yolk, why? So this is because to form the emulsion, you need to provide a special and chemical component, which is called the emulsify. And, and the emulsify has to contain two different parts. So one part is like this red head, it's a water loving part. This is what we call the hydrophilic part. So another part is, is, is this, uh, this tear. This is the oil loving part, it's hydrophobic part. The only with these two parts together and the oil droplet can be stable and, and, uh, and, with, uh, and without separating and into the two different liquid phase. So emulsifier here actually is the key to make this oil stable in such a system. So in this case, we need to get such kind of oil uh, either by commercial way or we need to prepare it by ourselves in the lab. So this we call emulsified or amphiphilic emulsifier. And for, uh, so, but what is the relevant to, uh, what is relevant to, uh, to, uh, to our enzyme application of using, uh, using the emulsions? So actually, and if we look at the, the industry, so as I told before, enzyme is only water soluble. 
So, but there are many, many applications, for example, for, the, so for pr producing of the drugs. And you need to start with uh, raw materials, which is not soluble in, in water. So what can you do? And in this case, and you have to put your enzyme into the water. And then you have to prepare another phase, uh, oil phase. And then you put the, your substrate, which is not soluble in, 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 in water, but soluble in, in this oil phase. So in this case, after you can stir in these two different phases, then you can allow the enzyme to catalyze the substrate in this oil phase. And so this procedure actually works somehow in the industry, but, uh, but we know that this is not good really efficient because you see this is a two distinct phase between the oil and water has, has a very smaller uh, surface contact to so enzyme uh, enzyme does not have good contact with the substrate here. And in the past, so scientists actually provide, uh, provided um, compromise ideas. So if you have these two phase, so why not form an uh, emulsion? So they just uh, drop the smaller molecular uh, surfactant detergent like uh, molecules into this two phase and then you stir in them, then you get an emulsion like milk like emulsion. So where, so this emulsion, it's, uh, it's actually creates and to, to have many different uh, smaller water droplets uh, with the enzyme inside here. And because the water is uh, become a very smaller droplets, then this water phase has a very large surface contact. So in the end, enzyme have very good, uh, good contact with outside the substrate. So then you will have good enzyme activity for the uh, for the production of, of the reaction. And unfortunately, such a process has never been applied and in the industry, even though the enzyme have good activity. This is because, and after the reaction is problem, it's very difficult to remove these smaller surfactants, these smaller detergents and from, uh, from the emulsion. So this is actually, it's a problematic from the industry. So, so our group now in the past, so we try to uh, um, uh, solve such problems. And we also want to prepare emulsion, but it's a new type of emulsions. And we don't want to use such a smaller uh, surfactant molecules. Uh, instead, and we will use uh, some bigger objects like big molecules, a polymer, or even uh, the proteins, or even some particles. So this. Uh, um, big objects has the similar, uh, have the similar uh, properties as the surfactants. You have one part that like water, you have another part and doesn't like water. And then if you have the, the, such a two parts, you, you are able to form such emulsions. So we hope and we are able to prepare such emulsions and for giving enzyme a good activity. Meanwhile, in the end, we can separate this uh, emulsify from the system because they are big. So we can use uh, some classical um, purification uh, system like uh, filtration, or we can segregate this big part from the system. And so, so the easiest uh, and also and the cheap, probably is the cheapest way to do such, we can and replace the smaller molecular emulsified and with the big molecules. So in this case, we are prepare a very large molecular and we call it is as a polymer. So polymer are very large, smaller molecular detergents, surfactants, and it can be in the molecular weight of a hundred Dalton. But however, if we can prepare a big molecules can reach to up to 10,000 Dalton. So like this one, and we can prepare such a big molecular polymer and which has the hydrophilic part. This is the water loving part, and this is the oil loving part. And we prepare such a um, big polymer in this uh, chemical reactions. So these reactions, I don't need to explain the detail about the, the, um, the reaction uh, conditions, but it's very easy to prepare. And also we can produce uh, such a Big polymer in a good amount uh, in about one day with a kilogram. And as long as you have such a uh, bigger polymer, and then of course we need to optimize 
the composition of this uh, uh, hydrophilic part and this hydrophobic part. And then we hope we are able to, or we were able to get uh, optimum such a uh, molecular uh, stuff. And afterwards, we drop these uh, molecules into an uh, oil, which is uh, toluene. And we also put the enzyme in, into the water. So you have an enzyme water here, you have polymer in toluene. So what we can do, we can mix these two liquids together, and then you can see you can form something like a, a milk-like emulsion. And you can slowly uh, handshake in them. And this is actually the emulsion. It's a very good, it's very stable. You can keep it for one week. And since we have this enzyme in, in, in the liquid or in the water, so the enzyme will be encapsulated by the polymer and, uh, outside. And then if the, if the outside you have this, uh, your substrate the enzyme and have good contact with the substrate because the enzyme droplets, uh, aqueous droplets is small. So you have large surface contact with outside. So we, then we can do some uh, enzymatic uh, application. So what we have done, of course, we can also uh, try to change a bit of the, the emulsion preparation. And we, we actually prepare the emulsion with different water and uh, different oil volumes. And for example, here, the ratio is arranged from one to nine to seven to, to three. And what we see is, is interesting to us. And if you have lower water to oil ratio, then you have only the single emulsion, like uh, the classical, uh, the milk-like emulsion. And however, if the water and, uh, and oil volume ratio become five uh, to five, so actually we get a, a multiple emulsion. So which means we have one emulsion and then inside you have a multiple emulsion in, inside again. So this is actually, you not only emulsify once, but you emulsify them uh, actually a few times. We, this is of course, in the end, will contribute a very good uh, enzyme uh, uh, activity. The reason is in such kind of uh, only single emulsions and you have uh, um, a large surface contact, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's compared with uh, the multiple emulsion. In this case, it's, it's the contact of the interface is small. And so if you have the enzymes, for example, in our case, and we have uh, the enzyme benzoadenase. So this enzyme allowed you to run such uh, the benzoin condensation reactions. We can see, so in, in the only single emulsions, the activity of enzyme is lower. And however, if, we, if you have the multiple emulsions, the enzyme activity will be, will be high. And, and as I just tell you in the video that, uh, and also in the introduction part, the our emulsion, our polymer can be prepared in the kilogram scales and in, in about one day and the time scale. So this is actually allowed us to uh, prepare a large, relatively large scale of the experiment. So what we have done, it is we, again, we prepare and, and the enzyme into the water and we, we put this big uh, polymer into the toluene like this one. So each of them is a one to one, uh, one liter. So, so afterwards, then you can easily mix the, the, the water with the enzyme into the, the oil with the polymer. And then it becomes a uh, milk-like emulsion. So, in, so that means inside you have millions of the water plates containing enzyme inside. So this enzyme, if you put this, uh, the chemical substance, uh, this one, into this, uh, uh, this emulsion uh, liquid. And this enzyme benzoadenase can catalyze the production of uh, enantiomer pure of arbenzoin. So this is actually um, the compression. If you don't use enzyme, so the, the enzyme doesn't have, does not have good uh, performance. However, if the enzyme prepare in such kind of system, you can get a very good enzyme and activity. And you can see that uh, only after a few hours and at room temperature, and we can get uh, the gram scale of, of such a uh, pure compound. And by the way, this compound is uh, actually very expensive. And for example, the five gram here can cost uh, 
over 20,000 uh, um, euro if you buy from Sigma, but we can uh, prepare them and in the such a good amount uh, uh, in the cheap way. And, but the one I showed you before, the polymer of enzyme, in the end, how can you purify them? And you have to use a large amount of another solvent, anti-solvent, to pre-stress the enzyme and from the pre-stress enzyme and pre-stress the, the polymer from the system. So this is actually, and it's good, but it's uh, still, you need a lot of uh, cost for using uh, the other organic solvent. So recently, and we try to uh, make such a recycling of the polymer and enzyme uh, even more uh, convenient. So what we try to do, we try to prepare a, a smarter emulsion, so which is actually made with uh, a responsive polymer. So what does this mean? So we also prepare the polymer in the similar way, similar way, and this polymer has to contain uh, this part is uh, uh, the hydrophobic part, this part is the hydrophilic part. But so these two different parts actually is responsive to a different uh, the environmental change. For example, so this one is uh, the hydrophobicity of this part is changed if you if you heat up the temperature uh, to, uh, up to 40 degrees C. So this part, if you put a bit of acid conditions, the polymer also properly is changed. So this means at room temperature, at neutral pH, so we can prepare such polymer and to prepare our emulsions. And, but after uh, you make the emulsion, allow the enzyme to perform the reaction. And after you want to separate this polymer from the system, you can just easily to heat up the temperature at about 40 degree, or you can just uh, treat the, the emulsion with the, the, for example, CO2, then probably the emulsion will be automatically separate. Then you can actually very easy to, uh, to get your product or to separate your polymer. And so what we have done, it is, and we can, of course, to prepare these emulsions and to drop this polymer here, and then you handshaking them, it become a milk-like emulsions. And of course, the enzyme is stay in, in such a smaller and water droplets. And then this emulsion is uh, it's actually very stable and for about uh, uh, overnight. This is what you can see. This is, uh, if you take the microscopy, you can see the enzyme uh, droplets is dispersed in the oil pouring phase. And uh, so this is the, the experiments. We observe that uh, this emulsion is indeed uh, can be breaked by, by, for example, heating up to the high temperature or you, or, or, or you treat it with uh, uh, the CO2 gas. So then you can see this is from emulsion. You just treat it in the different uh, uh, external uh, environments, then the emulsion is separate. So we can also repeat such uh, emulsion separation and emulsion separation for a few times. And we can also see that, uh, and if, we want to, this is actually the good improvement that uh, the emulsion can be separate. But then the next question is if we put the enzyme inside, what happens? So we use the experiment to, to, uh, to prove that actually, and you, you have enzyme inside, the enzyme did, did not be denatured by such a uh, uh, temperature and such a CO2 treatment. The secondary structure of the enzyme remains nearly the same. So if you have such a smart emulsion, which is actually responsive to the environmental change, and then it has allowed us to perform and three different enzymes for three different uh, chemical productions, for example, and we use the first enzyme lapis to do such kind of hydrolysis reactions. And we have the second enzyme to do such oxidation reactions. We have the third enzyme, which is the benzoadenase to do this, uh, the, the benzoin uh, condensation reactions. And each of the enzyme can perform in the emulsion uh, with them optimal conditions. And we can also put them together and in the separate way. And in the end, you can use the three enzymes and to get such a final product from a uh, cheap and, and the raw materials from here. And you can, we can see that we can achieve a good um, uh, enzyme efficiency and good production uh, productivity 
and uh, uh, use such a kind of uh, smart emergence again so we can scale up such emergence and from one milliliter and to 800 milliliter and to produce uh, such an enhanced pure compounds uh, in the gram scale and so, so as I said, to using the, um, uh, the polymer is uh, the easiest way, but actually there's another simple way to prepare a, a not classical emulsion is to use a part. So actually hundred years ago, Mr. Binks and observed that if the particle who is li which is like, uh, which has uh, two different parts, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, so this particle is able to also stabilize the milk-like emulsions. So the theory is uh, if the particle makes the emulsion in the end, it's uh, very hard to remove this, uh, uh, the particle and from the system. So, so when we know this such kind of new type of emulsion, so in the past uh, we drop the enzyme and to uh, emulsify them into the emulsion. So we, we call this emulsion as uh, the pickering motion. So we can see that uh, indeed you can use the particle and to stabilize the, uh, the emulsion. And here's uh, the uh, enzyme in the water droplets in the oil phase. And if you, if you use the advanced uh, electron microscopy technique, you can see that uh, and this uh, individual um, aqueous droplets is uh, stabilized, it's emulsified by these uh, nanoparticles. So what is nice to us to see uh, is you can see if you don't use the particle to make the milk like emulsion, you prepare the, the two-phase as the industry process. And in the end, the enzyme lipase has lower enzyme activity because the enzyme doesn't have a good contact with the substrate in the oil phase. And in contrast, if you just put a bit of the particle inside and then you can get the emulsion, then the enzyme good contact with outside, then you can have the enzyme activity is almost 300 times higher than the classical uh, industry control. So this actually um, uh, motivate us to uh, move to the next step. So you know the classical emulsion is prepared, uh, especially for this uh, particle stabilized emulsion prepared by water and oil. So actually, in the real industry, uh, in the medical industry applications, there are many applications that don't like the water. For example, if you want to use the enzyme to, um, to produce the bidesier, so which is actually um, happened in the two phase, the sunflower oil and with the methanol, then you have your enzyme here, then the enzyme will be, will be transfer the oil into the, um, into the, the bidesiers. But the problem again, it is uh, the enzyme do not disperse in such of such of the mm, two different uh, liquids. So what we have done in the lab, and we try to modify the enzyme with a hydrophobic particle. So here again, the so enzyme you know it's only water soluble. So if you mix, if you combine them with a very hydrophobic oil loving part of the particles, then you make them as uh, surfactants. So then we try to put this, uh, um, we try to put this uh, particle, particle enzyme uh, conjugates into the methanol and oil. We try to emulsify them. Then the enzyme is sitting at the emulsion droplet uh, interface. So what we can see here is, and you can indeed form a milk-like emulsion, and you can see if the enzymes and particle is leveled with uh, some dye, you can see in the individual uh, the, the droplets, which is indeed stabilized such uh, uh, conjugates. And if you use a microscopy, you can see that uh, so this, uh, this uh, individual droplets is indeed uh, stabilized by the particle. And we can apply the system again to uh, prepare to produce the, the bidesiers uh, from, from the sunflower oil. So in the end, you can get uh, um, in our lab, we can get more than 200 Mean liter with the good quality, and so the last part. And so we are we want to further and advance our um, our uh, our study. So we are not using the particle, we are not using the use the polymer, but we want to directly use the enzymes. So in the past, we what we have done in the lab, 
we try to give the, the only water soluble enzyme with a bigger, uh, like this one, polymer on top. And so, so because now we can contour the, the polymer and with the right lens, and we can also change them from, from longer to short, even move them from the one side to another. So this actually allowed us to contour uh, the polymer positions and properties in the, in the, on, on top of the enzyme. You, uh, we hope we can able to use such kind of uh, uh, polymer protein uh, conjugates and then to drop them into the water and oil to form such kind of emulsion. So in this case, the emulsion we expect is going to be even more effective because the enzyme is sitting directly at the emulsion interface. And then enzyme have very good contact and with uh, the outside of the substrate for the chemical reactions. So this is what we've done and in the lab, I don't need to explain time detail explain for it. So, uh, so this is also the experimental data. So we can show that we can indeed to prepare some kind of polymer enzyme conjugates. So this is, you can see that you can have such a, um, the, in the end, such kind of conjugate to prepare this emulsion and then the enzymes sitting at the interface. And this is, um, you can see that you can use the enzyme, for example, benzaldehyde to catalyze such a classical reaction from benzaldehyde to benzoin. And then you can also, again, to compare the system, for example, if you don't use the emulsion and then you, you will have the classical water and oil two-phase, the enzyme doesn't have good contact with the substrate uh, resulting in the end a uh, lower enzyme activity. But if you only put the enzyme with the polymer to form such an emulsion from the two-phase, and then you, can then you are able to have the enzyme with a very good enzyme activity. And not only for such a simple uh, system, you can also use many different enzymes to, to, uh, to, to, make, to prepare a complicated process to produce a different product. And so uh, to this end, and actually I have to say that uh, this is actually, uh, it's not only my work, but it's the collaboration uh, from, from different partners uh, in Denmark and also in, in, in Germany. And uh, this is my previous group in, in Dresden. And I would like to especially thank my two excellent uh, PhD students who contributed most of the work that I have shown already. And this is my current group in, in SD, at SDU. So, and of course, and we have to thank the, the, the funding organizations who make uh, the research work possible. For example, from the DFF, from the DFG, and from the, of course, the DS is important there, from the Karlsberg, from the chemical industry in Germany, and also from China scholarship or the council. And uh, so with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. So I am now open and to questions.